All right, uh, this video is a continuation of the examples started in the previous video. So in number two here, we're going to be converting numbers from uh, polar form to rectangular form. And then from there, we're going to extract the real part and the imaginary part. So in A, we have got Z is two times cosine 300 plus i sine 300 so 2 times cosine 300 plus i sine 300 all right um so here uh this converting this to rectangular form is all just a matter of uh, plugging these in the calculator uh and uh, if these are special angles and then of course so uh, using the exact values so let's see um cosine 300 is uh, 0.5 so that means this is going to be 1 over 2 i sine then um sine 300 is going to be negative root 3 over 2 we can confirm it uh, sine 300 is negative 0.866 which is root 3 over 2 then if we multiply everything by 2 here uh, we're going to have 1 minus i root 3 um, so that's uh, part 1 then part 2 um, x is real part of z is 1 is this one y is the imaginary part of z it's negative root 3 so this number is in the fourth quadrant okay <clears throat> b we have uh, 7 cis of 200 z equals 7 cis of 270 so if we expand this to cosine 270 plus i sine 270 and then simply punch in the calculator so cosine 270 is equal to zero um, while sine 270 you'll find is negative one so this is going to be negative seven i um, which means the real part is zero and the imaginary part is negative seven right and then in c we've got six cosine two pi on three plus i sine on three six cosine two pi on three plus i sine two pi on three okay um what we might want to do first is to convert 2 pi on 3 to degrees or alternatively just express the calculator in radians mode so this is 2 pi over 3 we say to convert this to degrees we simply replace pi by 180 so this is cosine 120 plus i sine 120 then again i want to do cosine 120 find that it's negative uh, 0 0.5 and uh, so this is going to be 6 into negative 0 0.5 120 is in the second quadrant uh, so the sine 
is going to be positive root 3 on 2. Then multiply this by uh, 6. So we're going to have 3 into minus 1 plus i root 3. Um, so that means in part 2, x is going to be negative 3. y is going to be 3 root 3. Okay, then uh, in d, we have uh, 5 cis pi. So in d, 5 cis pi. Now remember, pi is just 180. Um, so this is going to be 5 into cosine 180 is negative 1. Sine 180 is 0. So this is negative 5. So the real part of this number is negative 5. The imaginary part of this number is 0. Okay, at this point, we're going to ask you to have a go at E and F. E and F here. Um, pause the video. And then you can compare with our answers later. All right, so for E, we have got 10 cosine 7 pi on 6. Uh, plus i sine 7 pi on 6. Uh, 7 pi on 6 is 210 degrees. And so if we punch this in the calculator, we're going to find that cosine is negative 3, 3 on 2, and sine is negative 1 half. So when you simplify this, this is the rectangular form of the number. And so the real part of z is negative 5 root 3. And the imaginary part is negative 5. In uh, f, we have got uh, root 2 cis 3 pi on 4. 3 pi on 4 is 135. And then if punch this in the calculator, cosine is negative root 2 on 2. Sine is positive root 2 on 2. So this thing is going to work out to minus 1 plus i. And so the real component is negative 1. And the imaginary component is positive 1. Okay. Um, we're now going to look at um, uh, multiplication and uh, division in polar form. So multiplication and uh, division. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume um, that Z1 is equal to R1 cosine theta 1 plus I sine theta 1 we're going to assume that z2 is r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 then we're going to multiply this 2 so z1 times z2 is going to be that first one theta 1 times r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2. Right, the uh, r's come this side and then the other values, let's work them out. So, uh, cosine theta 1 times cosine theta 2 which is going to give us cosine theta 1 sine theta 2 then cosine theta 1 
times sine theta 2 okay then i times sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 so that's this term times this term then finally i squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2 so that's this term and this term then uh, so this is r1 r2 times this here is just negative 1 i squared so we so that term is going to be a real term so we're going to have uh, cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 then these two terms are going to uh, have a coefficient i so we're going to have sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 here plus sine theta 2 cosine theta 1 uh, the now um, you are going to realize if you recall the formulas for compound angles okay um, so the formula for cosine alpha plus beta was equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta so that means what we have here is our real part is simply cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 and then also if you compare with the formula for sine alpha plus beta uh, it was sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha so what we have there is simply sine theta 1 plus theta 2 okay so what we are noticing is that um, Um, when you multiply these two uh, z1 and z2 the moduli multiply but the arguments add so if you like the arguments behave a bit like exponents so I'm gonna say therefore z1 times z2 is r1 cis theta 1 times r2 cis theta 2 this is simply equal to r1 r2 cis theta 1 plus theta 2 right so that's what happens when you add uh, numbers in polar form um well how about division so uh, so for division we're going to have z1 over z2 so we've got r1 cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 all divided by r2 cosine theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 then what I want to do here is we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator 
uh, by what would be the complex conjugate of this one here so it's going to have a minus here so we're going to have cosine theta 2 minus i sine theta 2 cosine theta 2 minus i sine theta 2 okay um, the r will uh, the moduli is just going to be r1 over r2 uh, and then in the numerator we are going to have cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 then uh, this one times this one is going to be negative i squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2 but negative i squared is the same as plus so that's going to be sine theta 1 uh, sine theta 2 then the imaginary terms um, are going to be uh, we're going to have sine theta 1 cosine theta 2 which is this one and this one then we're going to have minus uh, sine uh, theta 2 cosine theta 1 then all this is going to be divided by uh, this which is a difference of two squares so it's going to be cosine squared theta 2 minus i squared sine squared theta 2 um, minus i squared uh, like I just said a while ago is just plus so this we can simply write as plus okay so this term is going to be 1 then so and then cosine theta 1 cosine theta 2 plus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 is simply cosine theta 1 minus theta 2 and then also this one here is just sine theta 1 minus theta 2 um, so we're going to have in the numerator i sine theta 1 minus theta 2 in this denominator that's just going to be 1 so what we're having this time or what we're saying is that z1 over z2 which is r1 cis theta 1 over r2 cis theta 2 is r1 over r2 cis theta 1 minus theta 2 so that means when we're dividing complex numbers in polar form we divide the moduli and we subtract the um, we subtract the arguments the thetas okay let's look at some examples all right in this example we're going to evaluate uh, given these <clears throat> operations in polar form we're going to evaluate them and then we're going to leave the answer in rectangular form um, so there's four of these i'm going to do two of them and you do the other two in a we have got two cis 108 70 degrees times cis 55 so in terms of the modulus uh for the first complex number is two <clears throat> for the other one is one so that that means the final modulus is just going to be two and then the arguments we add 170 and 55 so uh, 170 plus 55 
is equal to 225. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be two times CIS 225. Then we write this, we expand it, cosine 225 plus I sine 225. Punching in the calculator, I will find that cosine 225 is root 2 on 2. And sine 225 negative is also negative root 2 on 2. So this is going to be negative root 2 into 1 plus i. Okay, then in uh, C, uh, we have got 10 uh, CIS. 305 divided by 2 times CIS 65. So if we just divide the moduli, uh, that's going to give us 5. Um, and then the arguments, of course, we subtract this time because this is... Um, division so 305 minus 65 so it's going to be 5 cis uh, so 305 minus 65 is 240 so that's going to be cis 240 degrees so this is going to be 5 cosine 240 degrees plus i sine 240 degrees. Then we punch these in the calculator. Uh, cosine 240 is equal to negative 1 half while sine 240 is equal to negative root 3 on 2 negative root 3 on 2 so this thing is going to be minus 5 on 2 1 plus i root 3 okay so if you would like to have a go at uh, b and d then you can compare with our answers in a while. Right, uh, we are assuming that we've now, you have now had a go at B and D. Uh, so here is uh, our solution. So for B, uh, we have got uh, CIS, 2 CIS 50 times 3 CIS of 40. Uh, the, uh, the moduli multiplied to 6. These ones add up to 90. Then cosine 90 is 0, sine 90 is 1. So this is just going to be 6i. Uh, this time we're dividing 4 divided by 2 is uh, 2. And uh, the these 2 subtract to 180. Cosine 180 is negative 1, sine 180 is 0. Okay, um, then in number two, uh, so let's uh, see what number two. All right, in this example, we are going to perform each operation in polar form. And uh, then we're going to leave the answer in rectangular form. So like remember earlier, we just multiplied this out, but now we want to practice our polar form. So first we'll convert this number and this number to polar form and do the operation in polar form. Then we'll convert back to rectangular form. So in A, we have minus 1 plus i root 3, multiplying this by a root 3 plus i. So what we're going to have to do here is to uh, convert this number to polar form. Now you can see that here x is uh, negative 1 
and y is root 3 so uh, in the second quadrant work out r you're going to find that r is 2 work out theta you're going to find that theta is 180 plus inverse tan uh, this is going to be minus root 3 so let's see what that gives us 180 plus inverse tan negative root 3 okay so this is going to give us 120 so that is the um, argument so that means negative 1 plus i root 3 is 2 times cis 120 then we're going to do the same thing for root 3 plus uh, 2i um, so let's do that here so 3 plus 2 uh, root 3 plus i is going to be in the first quadrant so root 3 here um, so and 1 this side so again r is going to be 2 uh, theta is simply going to be inverse tangent 1 over root 3 so let's see um, inverse tangent 1 divided by square root 3 is 30 so our angle is going to be 30 so that means root 3 plus i is 2 times cis of 30 um, so what's going to happen is um, therefore um, so therefore minus 1 plus i root 3 times root 3 plus i is the same as 2 cis 120 times 2 cis 30 uh, here the moduli we multiply so this is going to be 4 the arguments we add 120 plus 30 so this is going to be 4 cis 150 so this is 4 times cosine 150 plus i sine 150 um, now let's do cosine 150 so that's negative uh, root 3 over 2 let's do sine 150 um, that is one half one half so this thing is going to be 2 into negative root 3 plus i all right um, so it uh, sounds a bit long but uh, this is good practice um, then we're now going to go and do we're going to do B and then you can do C and uh, and D so in B we have got uh, negative 2 over I minus root 3 um, so we've got negative 2 over um, 
I minus root 3. So I minus root 3. So we need to write both of these in polar. Negative 2 is uh, the easiest to do that because negative 2 is here. Um, distance from here to there is 2. So that's uh, our R. The angle is this one which is 180. So that is done. Then we have the uh, I minus root 3 so for that one our diagram is going to be a bit like uh, this so minus root 3 here 1 here um, uh, this r here is going to be 2 um and this angle here um so maybe let's work that one out so since it's in the second quadrant we're gonna have to do 180 plus and then inverse tangent y over x y is uh one x is negative so this is going to be one divided by a negative square root 3 and uh, the angle is 150 so this is CIS 150 so that means um, we can do the division now so negative 2 over I minus root 3 is 2 CIS 180 divided by 2 CIS 150 2 and 2 2 divided by 2 it's going to be 1 180 minus 150 is 30 so this is just cosine 30 plus I sine 30 cosine 30 is root 3 over 2 sine 30 is i is 1 half all right so we've done a and b uh, please have a go at uh, c and d all right uh, so for uh, c first we've got to put this number in polar form x for this number is 3 and y is negative 3 root 3 so the magnitude or the modulus is going to be 6 then the uh, argument is going to be negative 60 there um, so uh, that that means we can now write this number in polar form then we sort this one out so again there we need to find r and theta this number is in the third quadrant uh, r is going to be square root of negative 2 squared plus negative 2 root 3 squared this is going to give us 4 then the argument is going to be 240 so this times this is the same as 6 CIS C, negative 60 times 4 CIS 240. 6 times 4 is 24. Then 240 plus negative 60 is 180. Uh, then cosine 180 is negative 1. And sine 180 is 0. Okay, this time we need to do C, 6i. But 6i is just uh, directly above the origin, uh, 6 units away. So that means r is 6. This angle is 90. So it's going to be 6. Ci is 90. And then um, this complex number is in the third quadrant. 
negative 3 negative 3 here means this is 45 which means theta is going to be 180 plus 45 which is 225 then the magnitude is going to be negative 3 squared plus negative 3 squared under root which is going to be 3 root 2 so that means this divided by that is going to be 6 cis 90 divided by 3 root 2 cis 225 uh, dividing 6 and uh, 3 root 2 gives us 2 over root 2 90 minus 225 gives us negative 135 then cosine negative 135 is negative root 2 on 2 and sine negative 135 is uh, okay i think we need uh, to correct this one so that also going to be negative um so let's just confirm that so sine negative 135 Yes, it's going to be negative as well. So it's going to be a uh, negative one plus i is the final answer.